Hi, I'm Mr. Miyagi, and this is Mr. Miyagi's workshop. So, we're back on the old four-speed transmission. Now it's time to reassemble it and make sure everything is working right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by installing the cluster, um, the gear shift cluster. Okay, we're going to install this cluster, this gear cluster here. Uh, I've got a new main, sh a new sh shaft here. I'm going to slide it in, double check our clearance. Now there's a spacer that goes in here. This one right here. It slides down in between there. So we want to check our clearance on that. To see if that's the proper distance. Get it down in there. Now a lot of guys can stand these on end and... If you do it right, you can just put it together and that'll all slide together. So now what we want to do is we want to check our in play clearance here. Now this isn't supposed to be over 5,000 of clearance here. Let's see where we come at. How about that? Double check the other end. All right, yeah, that's going to be good. So now I'm going to pull this back out and we'll lubricate that shaft. What I'm doing here is I'm applying a little bit of grease inside there for those roller bearings. Put a little bit on here. Actually, too, it wouldn't hurt since I've replaced this bushing and it just slides in and out of there. So apply a little lubricant in there. This is the messy part of the job. And I just like to make sure everybody's lubricated up. We'll just slide that out of there. If it'll come out easy. Of course not. It won't come out easy. There we go. Slide this. Now this comes with that James uh, rebuild kit. These little bushings here. There's also another one, and I'll show you here in a second. There's another one right on this gear right here, which is second gear, which I've already replaced. There's also a snap ring that goes in there with another little washer that holds that all together. Now I've already gotten that all together. So we'll put that on and then we'll put this first gear back into place. Now this spacer, I kind of like to have it a little bit lubricated up too. So we're gonna apply Apply a little bit more grease on there. And I need to get this in. And that's another thing too. You don't want to forget that little washer there, that little spacer goes on there on the other end. So that just put a little on there so that'll stay. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put that out of the way. We're gonna slide that back down in there. And then we have this notch. We want to make sure that that goes in properly. That'll slide in there. So this first gear, we want to make sure it's all the way up in there. Slide that shaft. It should go fairly easy. Now there, on the end of the shaft, there's a spot for a little uh, O-ring. But first I want to put this little spacer in this shim. Now you can get these in different sizes. There's a, a packet you can get that comes with all the counter shaft gear uh, spacers in it, all different sizes. Now this one's a 94 thousandths. And I don't remember exactly what I took out, but uh, they just slide down in place if you can get them to slide. You know, I've been testing this out and it went in and out of there real easy but now that I'm filming it <laughs> it doesn't want to slide in that easy some guys stand these on end and put those in if you've got it pretty well where it's supposed to be you shouldn't have a problem pushing that shaft up in there it's in the holes now in this kit You'll get a, a gasket set up for this. 
And this this handles various years. But we're going for this little O-ring right here. And it also has some other sealing um, seals that need to be put in place. And some of the stuff you won't use. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that on. What this does is it keeps the fluid in there. But you also want to put a little bit of lubricant on there. Smear a little grease on there. Doesn't hurt. Have it covered. And then that just shoves in. And let me tap that in there. Okay, you don't have to hit it hard. You can just tap that in. There it goes. Make sure it goes through the other side. And then here in a little bit, we'll line up that notch. And the notch I'm talking about, this is a used one. The notch I'm talking about is this for when we put the whole rest of the gear cluster together. So now I'm going to move to putting in our main cluster here. But we got to end up building it because I ended up getting a new shaft from James. Okay, so this is the old shaft with the gears and everything on there. And this main one just slides off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up kind of wiping this down a little bit, making sure it's good and clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of grease on the inside of this. Now this is get will get good and lubed up when the when the transmission fluid's been put in, but then we'll slide that on the new shaft. What I'm going to end up having to do is I'm going to end up having to press this bearing on there. And also what I ended up doing with this bear with this bearing is I replaced it. There's the old one and I put in a new one. So this is all going to get pressed together. So I'm going to go over to the press there and push this all together. Now what I like doing when I'm uh, doing any of these pressings, especially on a threaded area, I like to put a little uh, softer material in there. So when we push this together that we're not bunging up everything. You can see it doesn't take all that much to, to get it to go down in there. And I just run it down to it's tight on there. Make sure it feels good. That's another thing too. You want to make sure you put the darn thing in the right way. You got to have the lip on the outside. Okay, I've got it uh, in the vise. I've got it protected here a little bit. So there's a keeper that goes on there and which comes with the kit. And it slides down in there. And basically all that does is it helps lock in this nut that you're going to apply on there. So one thing I, I did buy is I got a deep socket inch and three eighths, make my life a little easier because I couldn't find the proper one I had around here for a long time. Okay, we're gonna torque this down to 50 foot pounds. There we go. And now we can put these tabs up on there and lock it in place. And then I'm gonna grab the channel locks pull that up into place there okay while we're at it we could put the cluster on so we have a spring that goes on there kick gear clutch slide that down on there now there's also a little key that we have to, so right there and a new one all comes with the kit it's down in there and then we have the top ratchet part of the gear that goes on. And we're a little catch fish there. And then we'll put this on. So I'm going to torque this. Torque it right at 42 pounds. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of grease in here on these roller bearings. So when these trannies sit, I don't like to have them sit too long, but... Okay, now I can get it in there. 
All right. While I'm at it, I think I'll just slide this in and then we'll put that cluster back in there. I don't know why I thought I could do it that way, but I did. All right, so this has got to slide in. And that's got to slide in. And then before we get too carried away. Okay, so very important. You've got a little spatial washer that goes in there. That goes down on there. And then in my other hand here, there's that. Little snap ring goes on there. And this uh, little shift clutch, there is a, says a high on there. That goes to the outside. So that's how that all slides together. And then that comes in there in place. So we slide all this up in there. Okay, we got that all slid up on there. And then this snap ring has to slide up on that spline there, there it goes. Rotate it a little more. There we go. And that slides down there. And so what we're trying to do, let me get the other shaft here. There's a little ring lock here that we got to push that all onto and lock in. And then that holds that cluster of gears in one place. And you want to make sure that that snap ring gets locked in there. It holds that all in place. All right. And then our little clutch here slide here. All this kind of slides together. But first, I got to get it up on there. There it goes. And that all slides in. And then we grab the rubber mallet. And we... Taps up in there. Now we want to make sure that, that turns good. Ratchet works good there. So I guess we can put this cluster back in. Remember, that doesn't go in first. Hey, I haven't done one of these for a while, so give me a break. Okay, pick that back up. Make sure that we get everything kind of lined up here. Slides into place. Make sure our spacer. That slid up in there. We'll tap this in place. Okay. So now basically the transmission is together. Okay, I kind of screwed up here a little bit. Maybe somebody caught me. <laughs> um, you can't put this back plate on these 80s with the kickstart gear on because there's no room to, to do it. So... I had to pull that kickstart mechanism off there. Let me rotate this a little bit so that shaft gets in there. That's why when I disassembled it, um, I forgot that uh, this comes off first, then you can pull this out of there. Forgot about that part. Anyway. So if you get in that situation, that's what you got to do is you got to remove that gear and put everything in place. So one thing too, you got to remember that little splash guard goes up there that helps sling the oil in the right direction. Okay, I torqued these down to about seven pounds, eight pounds. So that all goes in there. Then our gear goes on. Keeper there, and hopefully we can get this on without too much problems. Tap this a little bit.
Okay, it's the next day. <clears throat> After me screwing up, I kind of messed up a little bit. What I ended up doing, let me show you. Right down in here, this cluster of gears goes in last. And this piece, the kickstart mechanism, has to be off to put the retaining plate on. And that's how I got all messed up. So side cluster, the main cluster goes in first. And then this goes on after you put in your other gear set cluster right in here. And to tell you the truth, I haven't done this for a while. So that's kind of basically what's going on here. Yeah, I do mess up. A lot of times I forget what's what how everything is supposed to go together but anyway now you can see it's back into the right deer now, what i ended up doing is i set up the uh, shifting forks just for the heck of it but yesterday i also before quitting i ended up putting in this uh seal right here and the inner seal so anyway this is where we're at so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up for these uh, shifting forks and I'm going to show you on on how to make sure that they're all in perfect alignment what I have here is a Jim's tool <clears throat> that's a alignment tool for your uh, shifting forks now if your unit was shifting fine beforehand it was just a lot of wear and stuff you don't have to do this now I was just double checking mine and I have some gauges here, here, anywhere from 80 to 90 thousandths uh, clearance on both sides, like on second gear. And then for your high gear, it's about 100 to 110 thousandths each side. So they're centered is the main thing you want to do. And this unit also checks. You set it up with the rotary cap to get these at the right distance when it's in neutral. So everything on that, this looks fine. It's, it was, I just popped it on there to show you okay in that kit you'll get a uh you'll get a new uh shift shaft along with i keep dropping stuff along with the new uh c-clip and an o-ring that goes on the end of the shaft it's a nice shaft this one there's probably nothing wrong with it but i'm gonna since i'm going through this whole transmission i thought that i'd uh, go ahead and pull this and put in a new one one thing you want to do is you want to put your o-ring on so i'm just putting a new o-ring on there and then i'm gonna put a little bit of grease on that lubricate this up when it slides in and a little bit on that o-ring all right so this should hopefully slide in easy line up my forks here and then tap that in there get a light one here all right so now you can now the clip ring area is visible so you want to put this c clip on this little there we go so now that's all in place it does feel much better too all right so now we can put the top on put the side cover on and i won't bore you with too much on that you just remember you want to have your rotary cap in neutral and the way you can tell you're in neutral is the big hump on there this is neutral so this would be your uh neutral ground out switch for your light so then if it's on that hump then you're in neutral and locked into this uh this i didn't rebuild it was working just fine but uh, maybe one of these days we'll do a video on how to how to go through one of these this kit comes with new gaskets, which is kind of nice. So what we have here is we have the kickstart side, 
gasket and then we actually have the rotary side gasket which goes kind of like that I like to clean this area up a little bit so one of the things I like to do um, I don't like putting sealant on these areas I like using a little bit of grease on there which will help seal this whole area and I'll do this top and bottom on the gasket itself what I did is I came by and I used a wire brush in this area just to make sure this was all done same thing on the rotary cap itself so since this transmission may sit for a while I'm going to use some of this uh, Permatex uh, ultimate sticky engine lube and I'm going to squirt that on the gears and everywhere else in there because I don't know the next time we'll actually install this into another bike I've this is just basically a, a backup one for me. So I'll spin it through all the gears and everything here. Make sure everything is working right. And get everything kind of coated up a little bit. Uh, in the kit, you also get these new uh, shifter finger uh, rollers. And you should put those on, change out. That's when you want to make sure these are in place um, when you put this whole thing together. I'm going to lubricate that up and stick those on there and put a little bit of more lubrication around those. Same way on this one. Yeah, I'm lubricating this up a little more than I would if I was just going to put it right back into the, into the bike and then we'd put fluid in it. But I don't really know how long this transmission is going to sit, so feels good though a lot tighter than it was before hmm that's good all right so we're going to put this gasket on the pin lines up and then i'm going to smear on this rotary cap put a little bit of of uh grease on it this on there line up my pins we go okay we're gonna put these in yeah these are set about mm, seven and nine pounds right there foot pounds tighten that down so this is all together now so I guess we can go is try the gear oh there's first Neutral, there's second, there's third, sweet, that's shifting fine. All right, one of the other things I like to do when I have these apart is I like to replace the throw-out bearing for the push rod. And this one came with a heavier duty oil slinger, which I kind of like because what happens, the center of these sometimes get uh, chewed up and ate out. So this is actually fairly simple. Comes with some uh, surface bearing areas. You put those on and then be sure and put a little bit of lubricant on that. And then it also comes with a, a center um, brass piece to align the, the throw out bearing itself. And that's just a little needle bearing setup. And it doesn't hurt to apply a little bit of of uh, grease on both sides okay and then that just slides on there right over that that bronze bushing and then we have another uh, bearing surface that goes on there and then we have a little snap ring that goes on here holds this all together grab a pair of pliers there you want to spin that a little bit to make sure everything is working there properly there's your new one and then you want to put uh, a little bit of lubricant on there now 
in the kit, it comes with another bushing that goes right here in the end. I don't need that because uh, this is a brand new shaft and it came with that. So these just shove through. I want to make sure, put a little bit more on there. And there, you are in place. Okay, so these are just fairly simple. Problem is you got to line all this stuff up. This uh, oil slinger needs to go behind um, the kickstart gear itself. You get that kind of up there and started. And then you can tweak this around. Because what we're trying to do, let me show you a little close here. This, uh, this piece here ends up fitting on. So when you kick and you release the kicker, it comes back and stops on that point. So once again, you want to slide that oil slinger in behind. You get that kind of started on there. And I'm using a 5 8 rinse. And we're just bringing that up a little bit. And then you got to kind of work it on those gears. And you got to go in straight. And you got to have like six different fingers. There. And then that will tighten on. Then you just want to put your washers and nuts on. This one here, I'm using lock washers too. You don't have to, but they were on this tranny, so we're going to use them. Uh, another thing I like to do since uh, this end nut has already got a seal in it, but the kit came with one. I like to double up on those. And why is that? Well, it just helps seal that area a little better. At least just basically push in. So now you've got a double seal there, which is kind of nice. Put a little lubricant on there. Before I get too carried away, just slip this on there. There we go. And of course, what we need to put on to is a cover cap for this. Now I could put fluid in it, but I'm gonna wait until I'm ready to install this on something. When I'm at this stage, I also wanna check the kickstart and it seems to be working just fine. So there we have it. We have a rebuilt uh, four-speed tranny. Now, there's a lot of other stuff you can go through. Yeah, I went to the extreme of replacing this, but I didn't like the, the feel of this main shaft here. And you can see where it's kind of burnt. And there's a variation in, in um, thickness there. Uh, when I put the new plate on, the support plate, it slid on there nice and tight. It was a good fit on there where well, before it was real loose. So that's one of the other things I, I didn't like about it. Plus, uh, it this whole tranny just needed to be gone through. So replacing the bushings, you know, uh, these are the in-gear in bushings, uh, the end seal shaft, seal. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I ended up replacing the kickstart bushings in here, which wasn't a big deal. And then also uh, replacing this that goes into the outer drive system, the final gear here. Uh, I ended up replacing that. Now you may not have to do a lot of this stuff like what I, what I did, because your tranny might be in a lot better shape. But if you're, you know, kind of worried, you're here in third gear. Third gear is kind of always a whining gear that uh, has happened over the years. I've had a lot of shovel heads that 
still have that third gear wine. Uh, the one I ride a lot has a little bit of wine. I've rebuilt the transmission quite a uh, quite a while ago, and it's still you know it's got a fair amount of miles on. It's going to have a little wine in there. But uh, this one had a considerable amount of wine, and I thought it'd make a good video anyway. Uh, the kit for the rebuild was about a $240 kit for the bushings and everything. The shaft, on the other hand, was another $200, 260 or something like that, James shaft. And yeah, that's a little bit more than I really wanted to spend. But, you know, um, this is a down good transmission now. You can get, you can go into them and spend a lot more money on them. You can get close ratio gears and all that, and which, you know, the whole kit I think will run you about 800 bucks. But to go buy one of these that's been rebuilt, you're looking at the, you know, the ones I've seen on eBay start around $1,200. And then you have the aftermarket ones. Can you guarantee they're gonna be okay? You don't know. Uh, Baker six speeds, you know, the four and the six. I was looking at putting one of those in um, my uh, hardtail bike over there, but the problem with it, the kicker ends up being way out. And you know, what they've got, how they've got everything set. And I'm not a real big fan of riding um, on the interstates or anything. I'm more of a back roads type guy. So, okay. So that being said, here's the transmission is done. Uh, ready to go back in. I don't know what bike or when, but I've got one. So if there's any questions or comments, you know, you can put them in the comment section below, or you can send them to my email address at tmiyagi at hotmail.com. I always have questions. Ah, anyway, and if you've liked this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget that ringy dingy button over there for <laughs> the next episode coming up. So this is Mr. Miyagi saying, you be safe out there and hope to see you on the road. Ciao.